Hey, it's Jen. I'm excited to announce some changes to my podcast. We will now be focusing on neurodivergent women, particularly starting with ADHD women or women who have traits that show up in the ADHD realm. And so we're not offering diagnoses here, so you don't have to be diagnosed to come to this podcast. But if you're struggling with prioritizing, getting yourself to do stuff, being able to stay on task, focus, organization, you're feeling overwhelmed, that kind of stuff, even emotion regulation can sometimes be something you notice. If this is you, I'm excited to shift our podcast to tips and tricks for addressing those kind of challenges. And so I hope you'll be sure to follow or subscribe wherever you are to make sure you catch it. In today's episode, we'll start with lady entrepreneurs. So if that's you, be sure to listen. Hi, I'm Jen Barnes, and you're about to experience how to ditch the old ways of doing things, embrace your neurodivergence, learn tips and tricks to function optimally, and love yourself, neurodivergence and all. Welcome to the Self-Loved Woman Podcast. Hey, it's Jen. All right, lady entrepreneurs, is this you? You juggle too many things simultaneously and then miss huge swaths of detail or things that need to be done and end up having to do them last minute, creating extra stress and then making it even harder to focus. Or maybe you start lots of projects and get distracted by the next big idea, so you struggle to complete all of the projects you've started. You push at least four items back from your to-do list every day. Or maybe when you're working on a project like a new piece of content, as you're doing the work, you remember that you haven't responded to a potential client yet. So you open up your messages and respond with your Calendly link to schedule a call. But then notice that you haven't updated your Calendly schedule for upcoming events, so you do that. But then while you're in Calendly, you realize that the description needs to be updated for some language and messaging shifts you've made and do that. Then you realize you also haven't updated your messaging on your email signature and your Instagram bio, so you do that. And so on, until you realize time has passed and you haven't completed the original task of creating new content. So if this sounds like you, you may be the scattered entrepreneur. You might even have ADHD, though of course I'm not you know, diagnosing anyone over a podcast. And if this is you, then I know that you also aren't creating and using a daily time-based plan. But the thing is, without a daily plan, we can feel scattered and overloaded. And when our brains are scattered and overloaded, it is hard to focus. This is especially true with ADHD. And yet, the number one thing I hear from people who are overloaded and scattered, especially my fellow ADHDers out there, is that they don't have time to create a daily plan because they have so much to do. I actually sometimes hear this inside my own self when I'm like, no, I'm not going to do my daily plan. I've got too much, right? And for ADHDers, it's common to know that this type of structure will help and yet still resist it. Because people with ADHD crave novelty, so structure can feel like a drag. I totally get that. But living with ADHD or some ADHD traits without a daily plan to focus is like trying to navigate a ship through a stormy sea without a compass or a map. Just as a ship needs guidance and direction to navigate safely through rough waters, Individuals with ADHD or ADHD traits need a written plan to guide them through the challenges of everyday life. Without a plan, they may feel lost, overwhelmed, and unable to stay on course, drifting aimlessly from task to task and struggling to find their way to their destination. In contrast with a plan, individuals with ADHD can set a clear path anchor themselves to a structured framework, and weather the storm of distraction and impulsivity with greater ease and success. With that in mind, I'm about to share my method for creating an effective daily plan that both creates structure to anchor, as well as flexibility to accommodate both things coming up, as well as that need for novelty. The first thing you will need is a journal or notebook to write out the daily time-based plan. 
While you can use a pre-designed planner, I tend to find that limiting and a whole lot less fun. I also prefer a journal to a notebook because they are way more fun to pick out and doing so meets that need for novelty for me. Note that I choose paper instead of like using an app or something like Evernote or Notes because it gives me a free space or like a drawing board to pull together all those pieces of information from things like my digital calendar and my task app. Further, it can help unload the mind from having to connect all the different apps on yet another app. So I recommend starting this process on Sunday evenings to create some clarity for your week, though you're welcome to start it whenever you consider the beginning of a week. First, reflect on what you would like to accomplish for the week, including what you would like to feel like at the end of the week. It can be particularly helpful to list out the top three things you want to get done that week to help you prioritize as things come up. Then identify tasks you would like to accomplish for the week and split them into two lists. Tasks that require deeper focus and those that can be done with shallow focus. Next, block off your time for the week, writing in appointments, meetings, and calls. Anything that is already time that you have pre-scheduled and is not able to be used for the tasks that you want to accomplish. This will give you an idea of your free work time during the week. So at this point, it's helpful to consider if your intention or goals for the week are realistic given the actual time you have to work on things. So you can look at the schedule that you've written out and say like, okay, these are the tasks I want to get done. Do I even have enough hours in this week to do that, right? This is a crucial step, especially for ADHDers with time blindness, so that you're not overloading yourself and making it unlikely you'll meet your weekly goals and intention. Instead, you want to work on scheduling a reasonable amount of tasks so you can feel a sense of accomplishment at the end of the week and then can relax instead of feeling stressed out about all that you didn't get done. If you do struggle with time blindness, note that this can shift over time as you're doing these daily plans. I've noticed that as I have done this type of time blocking, I've gotten more accurate in my assessments of how long things will take me to do, although still not perfect for sure. Like writing content. Writing content, a lot of times I'm like, oh, I can get that done in 30 to 45 minutes. And usually I'm like way off base. So lastly, keeping in mind what tasks require deeper focus and what tasks can be done with shallower focus, fill in the blocks of time for the week of when you can work on the tasks you want to accomplish that week. So having this loose plan will help create that anchor for your attention. Just be sure to look at every morning and make any needed adjustments based on the day before. So if you're needing more novelty from this, You can get some fun planner stickers or use different colored pens. It's really important that you make this fun and attractive to use so that you're actually following through with using it. Before I sign off, I want to share some thoughts on focusing on your priorities with ADHD. So this is tough for sure, like the whole Calendly rabbit hole that I mentioned earlier. I found two helpful tricks for this. One, I use something called the Pomodoro Method through the Focus Keeper app timer to help me with focus. The Pomodoro Method alternates between 25 minutes of focus on one thing with a five-minute break and then repeating that cycle four times, then never doing that cycle of four sessions more than twice a day because that can get to be a lot. Especially when you're starting, it's important to just do like one set of four. So this can be helpful with staying on task because you know you only have 25 minutes to focus on the task before you have a break. So it can also be helpful to kind of identify like, okay, I'm going to pare this down into what I think I can get done in 25 minutes. This will also help with time blindness as you practice this because you'll be like, oh, wow, that was, that did not take 25 minutes. And then you get, you know, more clear on what 25 minutes is for you based on the type of task it is, right? So one caveat with this that I'd like to share is if you're hyper-focusing and you're getting a lot done, especially if you have ADHD and hyper-focusing tends to be productive for you, and it isn't for everybody, but if you are, 
you can turn off the timer or set it for longer and then take a longer break after you have lost focus. This is essential since part of the problem for ADHDers is getting ourselves to start to focus in the first place. And for some of those deeper focus tasks, it can be more effective to set the timer for 90 minutes instead of 25 because 90 minutes is the amount of time most of us tend to be able to still do that deeper work. So my second tip for focusing on what you're wanting to focus on in the moment, your priority, is resorting to chanting. Now this might sound a little silly, but I'll share it because I find it's really effective. So like just now for my five-minute Pomodoro break, I wanted to send an email to my cousin with some information he requested. The thing is, though, is email, at least for me, can be a distraction circus for the scattered mind. Maybe not quite as bad as our phones, but still. So as I did this, knowing myself and knowing that email can be a huge distraction for me, I chanted, right now I'm sending this email to my cousin over and over. Then, when something shiny caught my attention, like an email that I wanted to respond to or an offer I wanted to check out, I repeated the words, that is not a priority right now. Right now, my priority is sending the email to my cousin. I also reminded myself I only had five minutes for this Pomodoro break, which sometimes is better used going for a short walk or something like that, but this time I chose to send the email. So this process helped me stay focused only on the email I was writing to my cousin instead of getting distracted with all the other unread messages that caught my eye. As you do this, it can help to have a pad of paper or even your daily plan, assuming there's writing space somewhere on it, to jot down important thoughts or tasks you realize you need to come back to. This technique can work whether you're trying to focus on creating new content and remember you need to get back to the client. So for example, getting back to the client is not my current priority. Right now my priority is creating content. And then jotting down a reminder to get back to the client that you can come back to later. This can also work when you're getting ready in the morning and finding yourself distracted by, you know, for example, for me, it's the basement steps. I'm like, oh, I need to sweep the basement steps. I should probably just do that right now. Or, you know, finding my pantry disorganized and being like, oh, I should really organize my pantry right now, you know. And if you have ADHD, this sounds familiar, whether it's your pantry or basement steps or something else, it's really easy to get distracted and then we run late, right? Because we're not able to focus on the task at hand, which is getting ready. So now you have my favorite strategy for anchoring the scattered mind and two important tips for staying focused on your priorities. The question is, will you use them? If you'd like to, take a moment now to jot down a reminder to create space for this. And remember to start small. It really doesn't have to be like a big overwhelming ordeal. It's just a small but powerful tool to help you stay on track. Be sure to customize it for your own needs and for what works best for you. Like for me, I use a page for every day of the week. You might use two pages, one for notes and one for the plan, right? It's important that you do what works best for you. So if you try it out, shoot me a DM on Instagram at Pathways to Wellness MN. I'd love to hear how it goes. And if you haven't already, please follow and subscribe.